You are now listening to a member of the Disney Podcast family. Head over to Disney Podcast Family on Instagram to see all the latest posts for this show and links to other great Disney podcasts. Inspiration is at the heart <laughs> of all creation. Spark a dream that we're meant to follow. You're listening to the Extra Magic Hour, brought to you by Walt's Apartment Podcast and the Diz Insider. Join the team in the studio as they bring you the spirit of Disney through park news, history, and tips and tricks to make your Disney Parks vacation even more magical. It's all imagination, huh? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love that intro. Hey, I was what? not ready for that. <laughs> I me mean neither. Uh, welcome to Extra Magic Hour. This is the Parks Disney Park Show for Walt's Apartment Live and everything under there. Uh, I am one of your hosts, Joey, and of course, I'm joined by my awesome co-host, Lewis and Sam, the podcast princess, Lou, Lou, Lou Mental. I don't know where that one came from. That Lou just... Mental. <laughs> well, I was thinking, <laughs> I, I, I was thinking <laughs> Elemental. No, no, you had it right. Don't backtrack. Bro <laughs> is mental. <laughs> he said Lou Mental, man. That's Better than horrible. Luniversal, but how are you guys doing? <laughs> the I'm feeling Luniversal? Uh, I'm feeling mental, man. I really am. <laughs> how are you doing, dude? Uh, doing great. Been busy with work, busy with uh, Christmas shopping and holiday stuff. So, uh, But we're almost there. So, hope you know, everybody Lou that's Mental, is having a good holiday season. Lou Mental actually is pretty dang accurate if you've ever seen Undisputed. <laughs> and to know that Lewis comes up with those ideas and he's like the guiding force behind that entire show. Lou Loco. Lou Loco Lou. Loco Lou. And, and we got a special that- guest, Lou's mom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> whoa, whoa. This is my safe spot. Let me, let me, let me, let me. <laughs> we will I'm not be going voice. live tonight. <laughs> we will not be going live, and we love having moms on the show. Um, we are gonna, planning on doing something closer to Mother's Day with all of our moms that are willing to join. So <laughs> we will, we'll see how that goes. But you'll have to check out our Waltz Apartment Live shows for that. And if you have no idea what we're talking about with moms being on the show. <laughs> go back into the feed or go watch our live videos on Facebook or YouTube because the past couple of weeks we've had uh, Lou's mom on, we've had Sean's mom on, we've had them on together. Uh, It was a great time. So go check those out. But we're here to talk Disney Park news. So let's get into it. Exactly. We got some fun stuff to talk about. But before we get to that, uh, we'd just like to thank our awesome sponsors that we have for the Waltz Apartment, Extra Magic Hour, uh, Undisputed, all those shows, Marvel Tribe. I'm really looking forward to the upcoming Marvel Tribe with the recent news, but that'll be a different show. But we'd like to thank uh, Getaway Today, awesome travel company uh, that I think we've all used and or at some point and continue to use. Uh, Where in the Park, uh, awesome, very cool friends and scavenger hunt uh, games when you're at all the Disney parks, Universal, and uh, many Bush other Gardens, parks. yeah. Bush Gardens, yeah. So check them out. Uh, you, we love uh, Kevin, Amanda, and Kim. Everywhere in the park, and of course, Designer Parks Co. Uh, makes some really cool park going bags, very comparable and more useful than some of the lounge flies, I think. But I can't say that because for sure, with they- their <laughs> hydration packs, amazing. Um, they have velcro spots that like hold your ears, you can collect pins on your backpack without damaging the bag. Those are things that are not offered by Loungefly. They have taken a lot of your Disney Park needs and put them into one backpack that services all of those needs. So definitely check out Designer 
Park Co. Definitely. But let's get to some Disney Parks news. Uh, Lou shared something on in our group uh, today that I heard about, but I didn't see any pictures. I was really excited. So uh, what do you got? So we have new images from Broccoli Mountain. I mean, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I say that because, oh, man, I wish they would have had the boat. But I'm going to leave it at that. The boat was needed to be there. But so they released uh, a couple photos. Um, I don't know exactly where the source is from right now. Uh, but there are new uh, Imagineer photos of Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Um, I'm believing that it's Walt Disney World. I don't think Disneyland, because Disneyland recently just showed photos of them actually sculpting out the hill now. So I think Disneyland is obviously still a couple months behind uh, Walt Disney World. But they are now working on lighting, working on the internals of Tiana's Bayou Adventure at Walt Disney World. And I got to say, the photos are really nice. I mean, it doesn't, it just seems like a very more humble version of Splash Mountain's inners, obviously without the, the trio. But looking at those photos, they're really nice. Now, the only thing that I've seen so far that I don't like, and I know there's mixed reviews out there on it, is I'm not a big fan of the tiara on the water tower. Uh, that part, only because I feel like the way they portray Tiana in the, the, the film, she seems like she's not the princess type. That she's more down to earth, let's work, let's do what we got to do. I felt the tiara is just a tad bit much for the design, but the, the so far the photos we've seen, I'm really intrigued by it, and I'm I'm going to come on the other side. I'm I'm excited to see this attraction come to surface. Yeah, I think with a, um, a lot of the images we've seen of Tiana, whether they've been on uh, just concept art or whatever, but like you said, yeah, she looks like sleeves rolled up. You know, she's working and uh, like like what her dad taught her. So, yeah, that does make kind of weird that they have Tiara on the uh, water tower. But, you know, you, for the princess fans, you, I think you, I guess you got to get that for the you know, the princess in the frog part, but I think these photos, uh, I haven't seen it yet, but it looks like, uh, there's like an ABC logo. So it might be from that, uh, 2020 special, um, that was on, uh, recently. Maybe. Yeah. So, Cause I'm sure that that was a perfect time to give it a little preview. Hopefully if anybody's seen it by the time, uh, this comes out, let us know. Cause, cause these are professional photos. These aren't just like leaked cell phone photos. So, mm-hmm. but, but I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. excited. I wish the boat was there, though. I do. I wish the the tree on Chickapin Hill with the boat was there. I really liked that concept, Arnon. That was really rad. Yeah. Well, they can't give it all to you right away, Lou. Well, it'll be the, there. The, the new no, the new concept arts show that that boat that boat part has been axed. They They're took it out. It. Yeah. The, the 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 Imagineer model at D twenty three. It's just a stump now. It's no longer the the boat. And that's I'm bummed about that because that was a really cool. I mean, even though it was a dead tree, uh, Chickapin Hill when Splash Mountain was there, there was just something that gave it that spire that both Thunder Mountain, Matterhorn, Space Mountain, and the castle it gave it the spire that it needed. And I feel like right now, it's even though it's a small detail, it was a big detail that helped just draw your eye that way. So I wish they did, but I mean, overall, so essentially, still- they took a weenie out. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, a big, as... a, a big wet one. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we giggle about that, but that is an imagineering term, and weenies are the things that pull you from section of the park to section of the park. So, yeah, so for example, the castle is a weenie. It directs your attention, and then you've got you know everything in the next land, the like the center points of each land that draw your attention forward so it sounds like essentially they took out a weenie for the ride and do you think that they're going to have a replacement for that to draw people to it other than just saying hey here here it is i think the water tower has become that yeah i agree just from the the model we saw d23 and that and and speaking of like the uh you know the everything the weenie and stuff uh, i was recently at a local store at uh, old uh, old sacramento and at uh, uh stage nine which is known for a lot of disney collectibles and everything but i saw this treat i was going to send it to you lou uh, sorry for our audio listeners but somebody made a ornament and then they stuck a a doll like a log with a that's, that, that's awesome so very cool 
But I think the water tower is the new the new weenie for that. And I I would not be surprised if we still see more of the bayou instead of critter country start making its way into that land. Um but I, I'm I'm I have a soft spot. Obviously we've shared countless times for Splash Mountain, but I'm not gonna lie, this ride is if the music and the story plays as well as the movie, it's gonna be a solid attraction. I mean ultimately the the skeleton's still the same thing, so Either way, you're still gonna get that splash. So, yeah. One of the, one it's, of these times, I'll, I'll ride it with Bluetooth, ha, Bluetooth headphones, and I'll listen to the Splash <laughs> Mountain soundtrack through the beginning of it. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I'm worried about because I love the music for Princess and the Frog, but being the fact that it's a, uh, I guess you could call it a sequel to the ri- the movie. The ride is because it's beyond like uh, what happens, but hopefully they have some familiar songs. I know they have a like a new main song going on and stuff, so. But no, I'm I'm excited. Um, like you said, bittersweet. I'm a big fan of uh, Splash Mountain and Song of the South, and but yeah, I mean, what what I've seen of of the new attraction looks pretty good, and I there's, know that there's this definitely is just... a nostalgia factor for those of us who um, are big Disney diehards. But what do you got do you, do you think we're going to be able to get a new movie out of the expansion do you think that they're using it like so like we're getting the after story do they turn the after story into a movie are, are we still getting the tv show is that still a th- i don't know I, I haven't heard anything about the tv show i haven't heard anything of the tv show since it was announced if they do i hope they do it the same way they did the first one you do it 2d animation you do that, but you take your time in the story because the key part of that story was obviously the flip of the story between a, a girl kissing a frog, the prince coming true. So you really got to really put some thought into how do you go back down that adventure? Because you could go the... I mean, they oh. did it. They did it really well with uh, Rapunzel when they gave her the Tangled animated series. Yeah, well, yeah, they go animated series. I think they, I think animated series would be better. Because then you have time to really introduce new characters, all that stuff. If they do a movie, I I really think that's going to be a hard one, and I really hope they stay away from let's bring it into a live action. Yeah, no, I think that the li- uh, that the animated series is probably their best avenue to go, and it is going to draw in a younger audience, which is what Disney's trying to do right now because. Obviously, they're taking away the things that are vintage, things that, you know, brought us in. And that's okay because they are driving towards another audience. They're driving towards our children. And an animated princess series is definitely a way to target a younger audience and get them excited about being in the parks. Because honestly, there are a lot of kids who don't get excited to go to the parks. Well, as long as they still keep a lot of that old you know keep a lot of the original stuff uh you know the snow whites the pinocchios peter pans because it's like can't you know yeah we, we got a, a new whole new generations that want the new stuff but you know can also can't forget where we started absolutely well, we need to uh, keep our foundations and it's a disney parents responsibility to introduce their children to those foundations yeah. what, and explain the value of how the disney company changed media yeah, which I think they've done good so far because they're keeping the classics and Fantasyland, then expanding like Tiana, New Orleans Square, and even if they do do a Fantasyland expansion, they can build outside proper Fantasyland and stuff. See, and I'm I'm I have an unpopular opinion on that one. I think I think the Fantasyland rides could change, but you have to really you could do a new take on a story. But you have to build it the same way as the dark ride. Build it with the don't like Snow White when they remodeled it, I think has the beautiful blend of what you can do with modern tech while also doing older tech. I think you could bring some new Disney characters in there and change it, but you just have to take your time, let the Imagineers do what they're doing, and let them really brainstorm on it. I mean, and see what happens. I'm not afraid of them losing it, but don't touch it if you can't do it right. So one doing it right is objective because they may think they're doing it right. And we look at it as fans and we say, that's absolute shit. Why did you give us this? <laughs> but 
too. So are you okay with them taking Snow White and having nothing to do with Snow White in that attraction or going Mr. Toad's like nothing Mr. Toad that and just using the dark ride as like a blank canvas or are you saying like take Snow White like they did and revamp it tell another story inside of it make it fresh but are or are you okay if they just completely do something different in that space so for me that's a tough one because obviously I like all of the dark rides in in Disneyland right now um but at the same time there are some movies that I think are not new ones I'm not going like say Luca Tony Red Soul not those newer ones but if you go say I mean even at this point I would be okay with like a Frozen a Wreck-It Ralph something that's maybe 10 years now where now it's Coco I think Coco could be a good one something that's had some time to really marinate where they're not just it doesn't look like they're jumping at the dollar I mean I would go I mean Encanto has a fun story and I think that one could play really well to a dark ride you know you're on some type of vehicle that's powered by the candle and the door and you're going through different sets, which is different rooms. So I think that they could do that, but I would say you use the dark ride as a blank canvas. Don't read some rides. I think could be revamped. Snow White and Peter Pan are two that I think could be revamped and solidly done. Um, Mr. Toad's Ride ride. I think it's a great ride. I don't think anything's wrong with it, but at the same time, I do see a lot of kids not knowing what that is and honestly being scared of it. I don't think it's that scary. My kids don't don't think it's that scary, but for the majority, that one has the least amount of time, but also parallel of Pinocchio. Pinocchio has the least amount of wait time as well. And Pinocchio, it's a fun ride, but I mean, it's dated. It really is. And a lot of, a lot of even parents today don't show that movie because that movie wasn't popular even 20 years ago which is sad to say because it's a really good movie and it's one of Disney's better films. But I think you build a new ride using the dark ride attraction. Monsters, Inc., even though a lot of people don't like it, I think is a perfect example of doing a traditional dark ride with modern tech. Yeah, and I personally, like, I'm going to back with what I said. And and, and I I agree with a lot of your points, too. Keep it traditional dark rides. Uh, That's what makes a lot of those so charming, no matter, even like, the Frozen ride in Epcot, I think, is amazing. Um, I know in the new one that they just got, but like for Fantasyland, I still think it should still be some of the classics. But but I like what I think what they did with Snow White and Alice in Wonderland are perfect blendings of new tech with the old uh, animatronics. Um, they should kind of do that with Peter Pan, what they did at uh, Magic Kingdom, because in my opinion, that that Peter Pan is is better than the one at Disneyland. Um, but they do got more room there. We don't have that much room to expand unless they close down that store to do that queue. Um, but Pinocchio and uh, Mr. Toad, I think, keep them, but do that kind of modern, just just uh, updating. But I would like to see those rides stay. Oh, yeah. If, if they can add just a little bit more magic to it where they're updating every year to make sure there's the new, absolutely, keep them instead. But if, another, if you're... There you go. Another Imagineering concept, plussing. Yeah, we I mean, talked but, about weenies. Now we're talking about plussing. Yeah, but I also think too, though. I mean, uh, who just did the interview and, and said about us? They're talking about Walt and and how nothing was to be the same. So I go back to that all the time. Like, yes, us as fans enjoy that, but if Walt was here today, those rides would be revamped, evolved into something new. I mean, heck, Disneyland 1.0 in the first ten years, about eighty percent of that was leveled back out for something new. So I well, look at, you think look at about the way, like, yeah, obviously it was going to be because Disneyland was rushed for opening. We know mm-hmm. that. Like, literally, they were painting. Claude Coates' son, Alan, told me that when he was painting, like, it was cardboard. And he, yeah. the dark rides were cardboard. And he was painting everything by hand with cardboard just days before the park opened. Like, obviously, that that's going to change. We have technology. We have changes in 
uh, graphic design and changes in techniques and in artistry, those things are going to change over time. But for me, I want to see the classic concepts still there. I want to see the things that were Walt's vision still being represented in the parks. And that's because I'm a Walt Pierce. And yes, I know Walt said that Disneyland is ever changing, but I still want to see those original concepts being represented in some way, shape or form. I don't want it to be completely erased because it's history. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that as well. I a hundred percent. But if, but at the same time, if they were to change it, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm going to be mad about it, especially because the one thing I did enjoy, not that I don't enjoy the whole park, Obviously, Splash being changed. I mean, at this point now, I'm like, well, it's almost like having that hoarder syndrome. Once you get rid of something and all of a sudden there's that rush of, well, let's get rid of all of it. Like uh, losing Splash, I kind of like, you know what? Then let's see what else you guys can do. If this was two years ago before Splash was announced to close, I'd be on the exact same page. Don't change nothing. But now I'm like, well, let's see what else you guys can do. And, uh, well, before we end this, uh, this news with a uh, um the uh Tiana's uh this is obviously that these photos are the first in a long line of uh content we're going to get for this attraction at both parks d23 is just coming up this summer then you know then in, in the year so we're going to see plenty more stuff but uh do you guys i don't know if it's actually been announced yet or what but is this going to be kind of like an an expand well, especially um, I'm just going to go the Disneyland one right now. Uh, is this going to be an expansion of New Orleans, or do you think it's going to be another side land that's like a bayou land that's still connected to Critter Country? Because if they keep Critter Country, it's literally just Pooh's Corner, <laughs> technically. So I don't know if this would be New Orleans. And I'll start with you, Lou, since we're the Disneyland people. Then I'll ask the same thing about Florida. So I think it's going to stay Pooh for a little while. But I think if you don't go the bayou and you change Critter Country, you can probably do bring in another attraction. Or, I mean, Pooh is a great ride. I, I think Pooh is a, a, another modern dark ride that is really well done. But honestly, I think if you're going to go that way, you can bring in another IP. And not to see Pooh go by the wayside, but replace Pooh with something else that would fit in there. I don't know what exactly off the top of my head right now, but I think you can use that to revamp Critter Country and bring in a new land. And I think it should stay a vague land. That's been my issue with a lot of the newer lands is you build yourself into a box. So I hope that they keep it new. I hope they don't go an extension of New Orleans because then we lose a land to just gain more space. But at the same time, you really have to give that land an identity. And right now, depending on how the ride is, if they use it to where she's a frog, then it fits right into Critter Country. And you mm -hmm. don't have to write the name Bayou. But if they use it as her as the explorer, like the concept art is, then Critter Country is kind of just poo. So I hope they don't extend it, and I hope they don't keep it. But in, instead, I hope they involve it into like a Critter Country 2.0 where you bring in some more critter IP or even original stories and see where it goes from there. I mean, you can play, I mean, it'd be weird, but it'd be interesting to see if they can kind of incorporate a Zootopia vibe back there where now it's where critters and humans connect. Be hard. No, no I mean, consider the bar has been set so high, but I hope that it's not an extension and I hope it's a revamp. So kind of a long answer for a short question, but. No, no, yeah. good stuff though. Good stuff. Uh, I can see that happening, both of them happening. And then Sam, what do you think? Like, because at in Magic Kingdom, uh, there is no... Frontierland. It's weird. It, I'm yeah, still so... trying to figure out. I haven't looked deep enough into it, but I'm still trying to figure out how exactly they're going to theme it into Frontierland, because you already have Big Thunder there. Like, if a mining railroad does not really work in New Orleans. Yeah. Um, like, have what? they called in New Orleans with you guys though? Because I'm no, curious. But that's the thing; it's called. It they don't have New Orleans Square. Tiana's Bayou Adventure. You do not have railroads going through the bayou. Like, you don't. But uh, adventure can kind of be 
like on the frontier. I mean, the it wild, makes sense. Wild, wild west. Yeah, I mean. frontier land. But, okay, so I have a question off of that, Joey. Do we think that Disney is unintentionally abandoning the themed land ideas? Oh, man, this could be such a episode on its own. But I think they were so quick to just throw this idea out there at the time when it was announced. And it just, they're like, yeah, let's redo Splash Mountain. Kind of forgetting that Splash Mountain at Magic Kingdom is in Frontierland and a bayou doesn't make sense. But um, like I said, that, that 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 could be another topic for another day. But that was yeah. just something I've been confused about since that the announcement. something we can wait and talk about once they uh, show us what else we're going to get, what more we're going to get, or yeah, how they're cause... going to theme it. Because they could have things in their pockets and pull some slate of hand that we were not thinking about. But as of right now, it does not make sense to me, and I think it's dumb. <laughs> yeah, and you guys have known my biggest argument about Splash Mountain in the bayou was there's no mountains in the bayou. Then it comes around. It's like, oh, well, there's salt hills. I'm like, or or whatever, sugar hills, or I forget what the whole thing is. Yeah, but and that makes my, sense. But... One of my favorite things about Magic Kingdom is the land theming. Like yeah. to to the actual pavement that you walk on, it is themed. Yeah, they got so, a poop river going through Frontierland. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they do. Uh, or Liberty no, Square. No, dude, Liberty Square through Liberty Square. Yeah. But like <laughs> Frontierland, it's supposed to be like red clay so it's like clay road like that's not by you yeah so to me it kind of throws off the theming of the land and i really hope that they navigate that in a graceful manner because that will be something that i would that will absolutely make me be turned off to the attraction because if it doesn't fit well into the land and this is where it makes me think was this more about the ip approach or was this more imagineering approach i feel like it be it went IP first before putting Imagineering into it. One hundred and ten percent. And we're seeing we and we see it with the concept art. Imagineers know what they can and can't do, what will work, what won't work physically, or even imagine it. So for a concept art to come out with the the boat on there in a tree and then scrap that, I mean we've seen altercations to certain attractions, but that's very extensive of an altercation. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, the early concept art didn't have the water tower, which shows. That was a huge 180, and we're seeing it with King Thanos ride, but that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, so, but I'm, like, I'm sure we'll get more, you know, more uh, details in the coming months. Uh, this is just the first tease. Uh, and first yeah, and this tease, is so. this is just our speculation on it. Uh, yeah. So we'll definitely retouch on this topic more on future extra magic hours and probably our live shows as well. So if you want to talk about it some more. Give us, keep giving us a listen, comment on our live shows, reach out to us on social media, join our Patreon, uh, and let us know what you guys think about the theming of what we've seen so far for Tiana's Bayou Adventure and about the lands and how you think it might impact the uh, land systems that we have. Yeah, and check out that 2020 special because <laughs> I still need to check it out. But look, yeah, like I said, apparently that's where this uh, was shared from. So. I'm waiting for it to come on Disney Plus. I really hope it does. Normally they do, but it's usually about a week or two later. Yeah, well, that's fine. So, um, next little topic I, I kind of brought up. This is a, a small topic. We we mentioned it before, but uh, um, after dark events uh, went on sale for Disneyland, the Sweethearts Night and Disney Channel Night. Um, right now, all all the Sweethearts Night have been completely sold out, um, which is I guess pretty big uh, that i don't know if that one sold out before but uh, there are still a few nights uh, left open for uh disney channel night but um, do courtney and kelly have tickets for the decom night they do yeah of course they do i love them so much for that I yeah so them. they'll definitely yeah. be covering that and me and courtney also do have tickets for sweethearts night so we're gonna be going to that I'm, I'm, I'm excited it's my first real theme night other than like an adventureland day but that's Kungaloosh. <laughs> Kungaloosh. Oh, I'll tell you. Uh, I'll, I'll get to this in a second. But uh, so we're actually we're going to be Disney bounding, but I, I'll save that for. I don't want to give away what we're doing yet, but it's going to be fun. Okay. But well, no, I'm I'm excited for this. The next tickets will probably be uh, Star Wars 
in the spring and I think a Pride Night uh, after Star Wars. Which one are you Disney bounty for? Sweethearts. Uh, sweethearts. I'm not doing the Disney Channel. He's not. He's not going to the DCOM one. Uh, I would totally be down for a DCOM one if I was able to be there. That would be like goals. I'm yeah, a DCOM and girl. Bring these to Walt Disney World back as well this year. Or? I don't. I not that I've seen, but they could be. I'm uh, not. I'm. I'm not good at following updates right know. now. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I just brought that up because that's the only real news that we had um, for that that I had to share. There's it's been a, a wacky news week, couple it's been weeks. a slow news week, yeah, yeah, holidays, slow, slow, slow for parks news, yeah. Um, but let us know if you're going to any of the after dark events. Maybe we'll be going. I think we're going on the eighth of February for Sweethearts, and I forget when they're going for the decom, but but we'll get that information uh, out to you guys. Um, do we want to talk about the Haunted Mansion before we do a getaway? Uh, yeah. Spot or yeah. Go All right, cool. So I'll let uh, Lou lead into this one. Uh, I think he had the story. Or yeah. So uh, there is rumors going on that uh, Haunted Mansion, when it closes this year for um, the Christmas overlay to, to go back to normal, that it will not be reopening. Obviously, we got the news that a Madame Leota stores coming uh, to the right side. If you're looking at the building, it's on the right side of the building between um, Haunted Mansion and Splash um, or Tiana's Body Adventure. And then they are doing the extended line cubies. Over the last few years, I forget the name of the, the park. What the, there's, there's a, I think it's, there's a name to it. But they are doing an extension queue. I mean, nine times I'm telling you at the park, lines for um, Haunted Mansion are in the uh, – the extended one so they're doing that but then also there's rumor and i don't know how factual this is i haven't heard or read anything on it but there are some youtubers out there really addressing it that the um track for the haunted mansion the omni mover the track is going to be updated to allow ada ada guests to enter and exit the ride without interrupting the flow of the ride um because as many of us probably know that go to disneyland often you ride Haunted Mansion, and there's a very high chance that you are either going half speed at some points or completely stopped. So they are working on making that more reliable. So um, it should be interesting, but there's rumors going around that Haunted Mansion will not reopen until all those are done. And Sam is uh, crying. <laughs> In the Marvel Tribe chat. David just put trading WAP trading cards in. <laughs> Have you guys oh, no. seen them? No. <laughs> look at them later. But oh, I please can we produce these, Lewis? Please. <laughs> what okay. In the world. <laughs> oh my god. Can you tell which ones are me? Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, audio it? listeners, we're getting live. Sorry. We, we are getting Comedy. live updates from our chat. And have you seen them, Joey? Oh, no, I'm not in that group. Oh, what? <laughs> I'll send them to you. So they're, so they're <laughs> garbage. The universal pixie duster. Um, they, are, yeah. they are garbage, pale kids inspired. Of everyone on the team. And <laughs> I can't wait for you to see yours, Joey. <laughs> oh, Why they do that to Joey? <laughs> oh my god, now I'm nervous. <laughs> Where in the park though is pretty rad. It is. I love mine too. I'm fishing with Figment. I'm trying to figure out who this one is. Fishing with Figment. Courtney and Kelly. Ah. Blue. <laughs> Sorry, audio listeners. Uh, we will have to post these on our Patreon if you want to. If you want to yes. see them. Uh, but yeah, Haunted <laughs> Mansion closed for a year. Uh, two questions. One, do you think it's true? But two, uh, Sam posed this question earlier. Do you think it when it reopens? If it reopens later on this year, does it reopen with Jack still in the mansion, or does it reopen with uh, Madame Leota and all her crew, the original crew, in there? What the hell? 
sorry. I just saw the photo. Um, like a Buddha in Enrique Iglesias. No, is that him? I look like Fluffy. Yeah, but like a Buddha version of him. Uh, that's tough. Okay. Yes. I, I'm sorry. Sorry. I hit the microphone because I was laughing so hard. Yes. I did ask, do we think that it opens up like standard most of the year version or do they, do we think it's going to open up with the holiday overlay? Um, because it's probably going to open late year at the after Halloween. So what do you think, Joey? I think, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it'll still be holiday because you know, why take down the decorations, then put them back up? Unless you really need to clear out for the track. But I believe that this will open up at some time during the holidays, for sure. So I, I'd expect it to be. Since we know Tiana's opens late uh, 2024 as well. Um, and I think uh, not, not only are they doing parts of the queue for the Haunted Mansion, but they might be working around some of the back stuff since Mansion is so close to a uh, uh, Splash Mountain. So that's what I think. I, I, don't, like do you think? I, don't, I don't like them out on the other store, if I'm being honest. Uh, I don't know if I like the location. That's, um, that's where I'm at. I like the idea. I don't like the location. I think because I think the Haunted Mansion deserves more than a cart. For it does. It, and, and not only that, Jack deserves to be even closer, more closer and have opportunities closer to his attraction than over by Pirates. So, I yeah. mean, I, 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 it does need a store, but I do not like the location. Yeah, because the store at uh, Magic Kingdom is amazing. Uh, the, but I am um, going to wait to see because, I mean, yeah, it could be uh, good. I mean, we don't know. I mean, all stores are better than the Avengers. What do they call it? The Avengers Vault. Oh, geez. the uh, the twelve foot by twelve foot store that's not that big. Yeah, they should have stayed at Stage Seventeen. Facts. That, that was a much better store area, unless they have something planned for that. But, but yeah, I'm that's curious a... to see how they incorporate. If it's true, how they incorporated ADA a uh, way to join the ride. And you know what? I would. I, again, like like you mentioned before, this is all rumor and speculation. Um, this is something I, I would like to see be true, and it makes sense for it to be closed for so long if they're going to do that. So, I mean, it sucks to lose a, a go-to every trip attraction, but if they're going to, you know, update it, make it better, they're going to do the whole thing with the queue, I'm all for it. Um, we didn't really get into this uh, last, last time, or even on a live show but um like we got uh images of the new space mountain in tomorrowland in tokyo and they're closing them both for like three years and it's kind of funny because it's we've we've had so much issues about tomorrowland here they're like oh well we can't close it for too long and you know do all that because we did that they did that back in 98 uh, for the 98 uh a redo but it's like tokyo or a lot of the um asian parks they're like yeah do it it's going to be close for three years. All right, well, do it. <laughs> you know, so, and I think what they're doing, it, their Space Mountain looks like a mixture of Space Mountain and Tron uh, just on the outside. So, but again, I'm okay if they're going to be updating or making something uh, better or more accessible for others too. So. Well, that would be nice to ride the attraction without almost knowing that it's going to stop at some point. Yeah. yeah it exactly. helps the storytelling of the ride. But at the same time too, I I mean, they did the they did the really extensive closure for Haunted Mansion. Well, like two right before, right before the pandemic, right? Yeah, and I felt like not a lot was updated. So I hope that this during this downtime they go in and really add those new touches. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in that ride that needs some updating or even working on. So I hope that this allows them to go in and really brush it up a little more. Yeah. As long as they keep the little uh, Rollies uh, Candleman in the attic, keep yeah. him there. So, because <laughs> that was a beautiful touch. All right, uh, we got any more news we want to talk about? Uh, that's all I got. Um, Let's hop into have... our. Oh, yeah, sorry. before we get to our sorry, I just cut you off. 
No, I that's okay. Up. I was trying to jump the gun over here. Go, uh, let's go for it. But before we get to an awesome Imagineer feature, let's hear from our sponsor. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. Oh, I was gonna say okay. let's let's take a getaway today break, and then we'll come back with our Imagineering feature. Perfect. Here we go. Well, hello, and welcome to Let's Get to Know Our Sponsor. Getaway Today has been helping Disney vacation dreams come true since 1990. Whether you choose to visit the happiest place on earth or travel to Orlando and beyond, they want to help you. Need to know the best hotel in the area? What theme park ticket should you buy? Have a last minute change? No worries. Their travel experts are always here to help. Want to book a cruise and don't know where to start? Hey, they can help with that too. They will help you find the perfect cruise for your vacation, whether it is your first time or you're a well-seasoned cruiser. When you book your cruise with one of the Getaway Today's experts, you will have a dedicated agent to help you every step of the way. They take care of the details so you can have the most fun. Getaway Today has layway, peace of mind travel, allowing you to cancel or make changes up to 72 hours in advance. You will always have the most up-to-date vacation information, both pre-arrival and upon your welcome. Getaway Today will guarantee the best prices with no hidden fees. And every time you book through Getaway Today, they will donate a portion back to a charitable organization in your area. And so far, over $4.5 million has been donated. So click the link in our show notes to start your Disney vacation planning for more information and the best deals. Tell them Walt's Apartment sent you. And until next time, enjoy the view from Walt's Apartment. Yay! I love Getaway today. They're awesome. And you can't see it on the video, but... (laughs) We got me and Sam both got our dancing pigments. Uh, playing during and Lewis is the- throwing, Lewis is muted, but he's throwing his hands in the ear, air like, what is going on here? I hate you both. <laughs> also, why did you get the CB memo? Uh, that just happened. It was spontaneous. It was. It, we Because we have bestie brain, so that just happens sometimes. Oh, it's like that. All right. Interesting. Yeah. You and I have, you and I have birthday twin no, brain. No, I don't want it. I don't want it no more. <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> Sonic brains. <laughs> But yes, we love Getaway today. Uh, they're awesome. Uh, we'll be using them in the future. Uh, and I believe uh, Sean said we're efforting talking to uh, having them on the live show soon. Kim, yes. Kim will be yes. joining us uh, from Getaway today. She is fantastic. You will see us on our best behavior while she's there. <laughs> That's We'll try. We'll try. Uh, but what do we so, got going on, Sam? Well, I was actually going to say that uh, I was on a TikTok live yesterday and Santa came in What? and he said he's got a, a good list or he's got he's got a naughty list, a nice list. And a, I tried my fucking best list. And he said I was on the I tried my fucking best list. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do for Kim is try our fucking best. Uh, the show is now explicit. I apologize, but we're going to keep going with it. So. I had a very difficult time coming up with Christmas ideas in Imagineering because there's not tons going on with Imagineering right now as far as them. Like in past years, they've done 12 Days of Imagineering. They've done the paper ornaments that lead up to attractions that are being worked on. They aren't doing anything for us right now (laughs) that is specific to Imagineering. So I have a list of five books that should be on any Imagineer fan imagineering fans christmas wish list we're going to talk about those today so the first book on the list is walt disney imagineering a behind the dreams look at making more magic real it is a giant coffee table size book and it was written by the imagineers themselves it talks about how they got into imagineering what they do what they do the tools that they use and there's tons of concept art in this book so if you want to see some original concept art The blueprints are in this book. It is beautiful. Number two, the Imagineering Field Guides. If you have not seen them, they are smaller versions of the coffee table book, but each one covers one park. So there's one for each park. And it 
dives into the very specific Imagineering techniques and features that went into each park written by the Imagineers who worked on those parks. So, and they're small enough to take with you into the park and look for magical moments. So that's a good one. Um, Number three is Mark Davis's Walt Disney's Renaissance Man. So if you're a big fan of Mark Davis's artwork, his animation, um, Imagineering, it was actually um, written by and about Mark Davis and Marty Sklar. Marty Sklar has obviously written other incredible books like Dream It, Do It, and One Little Spark, Mickey's Ten Commandments and the Road to Imagineering. We've talked about those on past episodes. So those are other good ones to look at. Uh, um, I got it. This hurts because I was, I, I mentioned stage nine here in Sacramento earlier, and they do like a book releases and signings and stuff with mm-hmm. the authors. And I was supposed to go to the, I forget which one of those books, but it's uh, Marty's. Uh, it was uh, probably it, his most recent one, I think, was Dream It, yeah. Do It. So it was that. And it was, you know, he was you know, meet and greet, signing, you know, the book. And he passed away just before it. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to, it, it just, ah, that hurt. So, yeah. Anyways. I'm sorry. That's okay. And then number four, Jim Corcus releases tons of Disney books that are fantastic. So Secret Stories of Walt Disney World, Things You Never Knew That You Never Knew. And more secret stories of Walt Disney World's, more things you never knew, you never knew. And a good companion to that would be checking out Josh's fun fact books. Josh is one of our hosts here on Walt's Apartment. He's the Disney guy. Um, Check out some of Josh's fun fact books as well. And the last book on the list is The Imagineering Way and The Imagineering Workbook. Uh, They are like the field guides. But they're not about the history of the parks and the attractions. They're about how you can start to put your brain to the test like an Imagineer. So there are exercises that get you to think like an Imagineer and think outside of the box and spark your creativity. I have them. I have the um, Imagineering Way and the workbook or the workout book. Amazing books. Highly recommend for anybody who is um, creative and kind of wants to get those muscles moving in the way that Imagineers did. It talks you through like how they're how they got themselves into the place where they were going to work, what their thought processes were like, how to train your brain to work in that way. So those are incredible books to look out. So those would be my top five Imagineering Christmas wish list books. Have you guys read it? I definitely want to check out some of those, if not all of those, for sure. Uh, we should do a post about it. On, on we our, will. On, we'll do a post, yeah. And I can put up the covers of the books and stuff. Um, we actually probably could do an Amazon affiliate link. Yeah. And I, I was just going to ask, are these all available on Amazon? They or would it, especially during the holiday available. season, would it be mm-hmm. better to buy them directly from? They are all available on Amazon. Um, some of them I have bought on eBay, though. Because some of them you can get autographed if you look on eBay. They're already autographed uh, and by people who you can no longer get autographs from. So if you're wanting an autographed copy of something, I would check eBay. If not, then go ahead and check on Amazon and just get yourself a copy of the book. Uh, They usually have hardcover and uh, paperback available. And I've gotten a few of them from Amazon. But I will definitely put a post together with links and pictures and what they the books entail, and we'll make it our Christmas wish list for Imagineering lovers. Awesome! Yeah, I'm definitely going to check out some of those. And what what was the last one you you brought up? The Imagineering Workout and the Imagineering Way. Okay, I just wanted to bring those up because uh, they were going to end the show with another rumor that we've been going uh, getting about DCA. And it's about uh, the where the Beast uh, Library just recently closed down, and uh, what they has been rumored or kind of loosely mentioned what they're going to do. So I'm going to kick it back over to Lou uh, with uh, what's what's been around the kingdom, I guess. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, um, if you're listening to this by this time, Beast Library in the Academy, Animation at 
wow, that was a butcher of a word. <laughs> Animation Academy, uh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice Workshop, the Beast Library has unfortunately closed down. That's now two of the three Sorcerer Workshops that are gone. Uh, first being Ursula's Lair, which uh, closed way, probably a while back now. Way before Which COVID, sucks yeah. because it was cool. It was a really cool exhibit. Uh, Beast has now closed, which honestly leaves nothing in the Sorcerer's Apprentice Workshop, unfortunately, except for the old um, lapagram style films. Um, but even those are just remakes. So they're not even like authentic. So, uh, But it's being replaced by something equally as cool, and that's the Imagineer Campus. No details have quite come out of what that exactly is going to be. But there's a lot of speculation, a lot of rumors, and a lot of really big names suggesting that the Blue Sky Cellar, what we commonly see in there, is going to be relocated to the Beast Library and become an Imagineer campus. I hope that it's true, but I also hope that if it's true, that they are consistently updated because sometimes the Blue Sky Cellar would sit dormant with projects that are already done. I mean, the, I remember when, when Cars Land was being built, that yeah. project was sitting in there for years after Cars Land was already open. So I like hope go to that Cars now, Land. <laughs> yeah, I hope that now that it's a prominent fixture, that's that they realize that fans want to see it, that it stays regularly updated, even if it's just armchair ideas and potentially how they have artists come to off the page and Disneyana that maybe on select days of the year. You have Imagineers doing photos and meet and greets at that same locations. I think that'd be cool, but I also think you take down the Frozen close up and you take down the Sorcerer's Workshop and make all three stages in an Imagineer process. But yeah, Imagineer Campus is coming to Beast Library sometime soon. And this got me excited because the way they loosely announced this, and this will also make Sam happy too, but it's, it almost looked like this is a way that they might possibly bring Figment to California because uh, he was all over the Burbank the studios and Imagineering the day before. Then they mentioned it, how it's going to be a workshop and the whole it, it it goes into the whole thing of journey of your imagination. And the, yeah. So I would love this to be the way they bring Figment because being a Figment fan myself uh, to California. But like you said, if they could do the three levels of Imagineering and have be hands on and not just kiddie, like we're the kids. I mean, yeah, we want the kids to be inspired to, you know, that, but us adults who are Imagineering nerds too, you know, we want to get our hands dirty. Hold on. You take Hollywood land and you make it imagination land. And that is DCA's fantasy land where you use all things imagination and Figment is like the host of that land. But then you could also do other imagination ideas and you change Hollywood land to be imagination land. I have an idea. Fantasy land. I like it. Um, you know how they do like the the animation experience? Mm-hmm. Why not do an imagineering experience where you get a like half hour class or an hour long class? Or like, hey, you could even do half a day because people pay for tours. Like you do like a three, four hour thing where you get an actual class where you get, are you're given exercises to actually collaborate and work with people to design something. And then you get a tour by the Imagineer who's leading it of something that they've worked on in the parks and they can t- talk you through their creative process. Yeah. And it I could think be that's a tour. what Lewis was kind of saying, but yeah, to do that, but then I, I just got a visual of the way they did that, the parks uh, experience at, D23 is they had the Imagineer working on Mickey and Minnie standing in front of the model as to answering questions. They had them in front of the Moana statue and the Walt statue answering questions and even the Hulk because uh, they had the exoskeleton yeah. of the Hulk. Uh, but I mean like having them teach a class. Oh no yeah then having that as a, even like you said an extra charge or something but. Yeah like you get to you get to pay for a class like, like you would for like Keys of the Kingdom type of tour. You're playing for an Imagineering class for a couple hours, and then you get to go into the parks with that Imagineer and see something that they've worked on. And you get, an instead of a pin, you get an Imagineering hard hat that they wear, because those are awesome. I like Lou's idea, too, making 
that imaginary Im- imagination land as part of DCA for sure and, and you land. can create that's, that's awesome you can create um experiences for kids to manipulate things and like just get their hands dirty and build and uh give them an opportunity to bring their imagination it, to life imagine a figment uh but journey through imagination, but you don't do a ride. Imagine a journey through imagination show with Figment and I'm blanking his name right now. Dreamfinder. Um, Dreamfinder. Dream Dreamfinder. Imagine that. Or, I mean, I love Phil Hard Magic. I really do. I think it's a really great show. the 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 quality of the video needs to be upgraded. It looks like PlayStation One graphics, but you use that 4D theater. And, or the, the Hyperion, but the 4D theater makes more sense. You bring a Dreamfinder and Figment show to DCA and just start slowly sprinkling it in. I think that'd be really rad. Yeah, I one hundred agree. Yeah, and it keeps the animation building intact too because I love the the drawings. I love the 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 room with all the uh, movie uh, B- BTS and music and everything and. Um, I dude, that that sounds amazing. I I would love that. Hey yo, Imagineering, call us. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I get everyone's trying to say that Marvel's expanding. And Marvel, if you look at the map, there's so much more room behind Guardians and that facade building. Yeah. Give DCA a fantasy land style land, but it's something more Pixar. I mean, you have imag- imagination land and what is it? Uh inside out? Yeah, you vaguely, you vaguely theme it around that, where it's not necessarily that imagination land, but you can fit other dark rides, Monsters Inc. in there. I mean, you can do an Inside Out dark attraction where it's all imagination. I like it. I like it. Dang, that sounds so cool, man. I I could like I I could literally visualize what you're saying, and it sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh. I don't know that that I think that's a high note to to end on unless you guys got anything else. Sounds or... like we we've had a kick ass show. Yeah. So awesome. I, I, love about, I, lo- I, I love you guys. I love I love you too. guys. I love you, Lewis. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, See how you try to work that in there. It was clean. I was like, I'll give me an A for effort. All right, well, I tried, but but no, that I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode of Extra Magic Hour. We will be back. Uh, maybe in two weeks uh, we'll see what's going on it is holiday season but uh, we got some ideas uh, popping up but uh, check us out on our live show wednesday night 7 30 disneyland time 9 30 walt disney world time and that's about all we've got for tonight (laughs) and i know we got lou's got some something brewing most likely for undisputed next week possibly or i do got some extra magic hour content coming out nightly for the next couple weeks too so extra magic hour or or marvel no i sorry marvel tribe did i say extra magic hour i meant to say marvel <laughs> tribe. so we got more extra magic hour no marvel apparently tribe. we got uh podcast host cards coming out too. oh yeah we've got garbage fail kids host uh cards if, coming we, out. if we can get those in a flat image we can make that happen <laughs> awesome well stay tuned everybody we got some good stuff coming up and uh i uh, hope you all have a merry christmas and uh have a happy holidays and we'll see you guys real soon uh, good night do we have Thanks. the exit music <laughs> this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past, and here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. 
with the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world.